Hi, this is Dr. Terry Shamiefelt for UAB Department of Medicine. This is part two of a two-part series of critically appraising a study by Forbes and colleagues published in May of 2014, the British Medical Journal, entitled Quantification of Risk Factors for Herpes Zoster, a Population-Based Case Control Study. Part one, we did critical appraisal uh, to make sure the study uh, was designed properly, and we came to the conclusion that they did also did a pretty good job of designing the study and that was low risk for bias. So now we can go on and look to see what the results of the study are. So I'm just going to scroll down um, to the results section. And the first thing I always do is look at, in this case it's table two, in many studies it's cable one, but just who were the patients in the study? Who were the cases, those with shingles, and who were the controls, those without? And you can see the uh, various factors or variables that they measured are pretty equally distributed or pretty equal between the two. So one of the questions we always need to ask ourselves is are there important differences between the cases and controls? And if we notice any, we have to see if the authors dealt with them in some way. But as you can see, pretty much these percentages as you go all the way across here, up and down this table are pretty equal. I don't really detect any that are very significantly different um, between the two that would be clinically important. So it's very interesting because the authors only matched on practice, sex, and age. But we can see other things seem to get matched actually pretty well. Um, so the, the patients seem to be very similar. Um, to each other, whether you're a case or a control. The second thing I want to look at, or the question I had, um, is what were what exposures had the strongest association with zoster infection? And so, if we scroll down here, and you can see here, this table um, has odds ratios because this is a case control study the measure of effect is an odds ratio and they have a variety of models and we're going to have to go to the bottom of the table to see what they mean and really we're going to look at the main model three which controlled for lots of other things and pretty much is control for everything uh, from the previous two so model three over here is going to be where the money is and the thing that has the strongest association um, when we come down here are things that are severe immunosuppression so these things the blood type um, malignancies, the HIVs, leukemias, lymphomas, um, myelomas, and hemopoietic stem cell transplantation had the highest associations. Uh, you can see what these odds ratios are. Other things that they were very interested in, um, like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, inflammatory bowel disease, etc., were um, almost all statistically associated with it other than diabetes, but these are very modest um, associations. You can see these um, odds ratios are really all under two, so very modest associations. Another question I had in the protocol was, um, did the relative effects of these exposures vary by age? So we'll scroll down to another table. And one of the things we can see here is they broke down this as these are the adjusted odds ratios based on different um, age strata. And these are the individual risk factors that they were interested in. As you can see, as you go across here, it's very interesting that the effect of rheumatoid arthritis becomes attenuated as patients get older. Um, so in an older person, the effect of rheumatoid arthritis is much less than it is in a younger person. We see a consistent finding when we look across all these risk factors. We see this very consistently that the effect of that risk factor is attenuated with age. So really, age um, is an effect modifier. It modifies the effect of these individual risk factors. And this p-value is the test of interaction. So when you're trying to look for um, effect modification, you really want to do a test of interaction. And you can see that's what the authors appropriately did here. And you can see almost all these other than for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, COPD and asthma are statistically significant. So there is effect modification by these individual risk factors when it's uh, statistically significant. So those are the main effects. We can see that being severely immunosuppressed, um, having some of these other key risk factors or, um, are importantly associated with the development of um, shingles. Um, the things that the authors are mainly looking at, these chronic inflammatory diseases and things like COPD and kidney disease have a very modest association, not a really strong one. Um, and then we can see that as patients age, age is actually a much more important risk factor and it attenuates the effect of these individual um, risk factors.